Hello everyone, today we are going to look at embroidery needles and we're going to look at how to identify them, how to organise them and how to keep them clean and in good order. My name is Sarah, welcome to my channel, Sarah Humphrey Embroidery, a channel dedicated to hand embroidery. We've got different projects, we've got different techniques, we look at different threads, um, we've got all sorts of stuff going on so do check out my channel video list and see if there's something there that you like. So the first thing I wanted to show you um, is this is this interesting looking needle book here now this has got a little bit of a story to it so this is the book that I used for the entirety of my Royal School of Needlework apprenticeship and I'm not proud of it but I did want to show you this because it is relevant so when I turned up on the first day of my apprenticeship and they gave us some basic materials and they gave us a, I can't even remember how many packets it was 10 or 20 packets of needles and I got my kind of little needle case that's got a couple of pages in it I thought well <laughs> they're not gonna fit in there I better do something about that so I, I went home that evening and threw um threw together this so it's just um some even know what this fabric is it's like canvas fabric it's quite thick fabric completely the wrong fabric for for needles and I just made some pages and I sewed them down the middle and look I didn't even <laughs> finish it off in any way whatsoever and I had a page for each needle and I put oh it's actually upside down and I put in the label um, from the packet and then you can see actually where the needles were in it and you will notice that it's nearly empty so you can see there, look at how many needles, that was just one page. And every page was filled with a kind of needle. And we got so busy stitching, I just never had time to make one. It was not priority. And I had this and it, it did the job and I kept it for the whole three years. And I've still got it, what's left of it. It's quite nice. It tells a little story, I think, um, of what not to do, if <laughs> if anything else. So I just thought you'd be interested to see that. But you can see what happens and this may happen to you. You may be super organised and just looking at this in horror. But this this may um I may be able to relate to this so you use a needle you take it out it goes sticks in a bit of fabric or it sticks in a pin cushion usually somewhere else and it doesn't make it back into the needle book and then you've got a big pile of needles and you don't know what they are so I thought what we would do today is get them all out and show you how to sort them out and to get a little bit of order back into your needle case so this is the one that I use currently. So this sits in the house by the side of the sofa and I'm doing a little bit of stitching in the evening. And this is the one that I use. So a much simpler version, um, down to the few needles that I use regularly. I say a few, I mean, this is my trade. So <laughs> there are probably quite a few needles in there. And it's just a piece of felt um, fastened, sewn down one end to a cotton cover. And the great thing about this one is you can roll it up so if you want to go traveling and take some needles these are great it's just got a little button on it and you can a little ribbon around the button so this is the one i use every day but as you can see this is no more organized than the last one i showed you and this is what happens you use one you just throw it back in the needle case you stick it in there because you're busy looking at the beautiful thing you just created and it's a mess so i thought what we would do is we would sort this needle case out and show you how to sort your needles into the different types of needles so that you know what's where when you're ready to use it so there are different ways you can store your needles. I've shown you my needle case that I use, but there are other things you can use as well. I just want to show you these. So these are wooden needle case holders. They're really, really pretty, actually. Um, and all they've got is a little lid on it, hollow inside, and you can put your needles in there. This is a slightly posher one with a screw lid on it. You've got one solitary needle in it. It's a massive needle. And this is one I guess I picked up in a charity shop, but I thought it was quite sweet. It's got Bulgaria on it, but it's really beautiful, hand-painted one. And that just pulls it on. Oh, no, actually, it screws off as well. So needle case. So quite nice to collect. Um, quite nice to keep your needles in because they do protect them. Um, but you can't label which needle is which in this unless you have one for each kind or you use the same kind again and again. So not terribly practical, but are, they're quite pretty. Or you could just make yourself a needle book. Now these are dead easy to make, but I just wanted to show you this one because this one was a sampler that I made for a YouTube video. If you haven't seen my video on sampling, do check that out. Everybody should be doing it. It's really important. And I sampled these stitches. So they were stitches using beads and I sampled it for the video so I knew what I was doing and then I made the piece for the video. And this was a really nice little sampler. I didn't just want to chuck it away and thought, oh, I know I can make it into a little needle book. So I just folded the 
edges in. I put the felt lining in it and I've just slip stitched all around that to keep that in place and then just sewed um, a single piece of red felt into the centre there that way up, um, to put a few a few of my needles in. So it's really easy to turn a little sampler into something if you want and then you can put a little bit of ribbon on it if you want to tie that up. And if you want to make a really simple one of those, I'm going to use this one to put these needles in, to sort these needles into. And I'll show you how I've made that. We'll come back to that in a second. So all you need is a couple of pieces of felt. This is the absolute easiest way to make yourself a needle book. You can get really fancy with it. You could probably get some nice kits on how to make a needle book. But all you need is a piece of felt for the cover. It can be folded in half, so that will be the size of your book. And then two pieces for the inside. You can have more pieces for the inside. This one has got three pieces, put some more pages in there. So you can choose as many pages as you like. Make them a little bit smaller than the cover. They'll just sit inside. Then you just need to mark the halfway point in here. And I've just stitched down the centre of that. I'll show you on this one. Just stitched down the centre in a pretty embroidery thread, done a running stitch one way, then come back and done another running stitch in between the first running stitch. So you get a nice solid spine to it. That's what the back looks like. And you can literally just fold that in half. I've frayed that edge so I don't have to finish any edges off. This is an Ada fabric that I've used for the cover of this one. So you can do your own design on it if you like. I found another little cross stitch sampler that I'd made for something and I've just sewn that onto the cover so you can decorate it however you want to. So you can do that with a bit of aid, you can do it with some felt, anything that's got a little bit of sturdiness to make a cover and then you've sewn down the centre and you just fold it in half and there you have your book. Super easy um, but just a great place to store your needles which is what I should have done at the beginning of my apprenticeship and didn't do. So let's sort um, out our needles. So you might have a needle case like this, which is just full of all sorts of random stuff. They might be floating around in the bottom of your sewing box um, or lying around in your sewing table. So just gather them all together from wherever they are and lay them all out together. So I'm just going to take them out of here. I've got just that little bit just for pins. Talk about pins. So just take everything out of the needle case first. And you can start to sort as you go if you like. Obviously pins are not needles. don't need to tell you guys that. So I'm just going to take all the pins out, put them over here. We'll deal with them shortly. I do like to keep pins in my needle case. Anything that's got a little bit of thread left in it because I was being thrifty and thought oh, I might use that later. Get rid of it. You're not going to use it later. You're not. Curved needles obvious and just take everything else out don't worry too much about what it is at the minute just get it all out so you can put them next to each other and compare them now taking everything out i just want to mention here the fabric that you put your needles in this is felt this has had a lot of use this needle case but you might be able to see as i take it out it's a little bit fluffy some of the fluff comes off the felt felt is a good thing to put your needles in because it doesn't have a warp and a weft it's not going to wear the needle or bend the needle it's really really soft but it is a little bit fibrous if you've got some doctor's flannel it looks a little bit like felt, but it's actually kind of an oil base in it. That's really, really good for needles because of the oil in it. it just helps to protect the needles a little bit. So that's another good one to use for your needle case insert. So we're going to get rid of that. And now we're going to sort our needles out. Now we're going to sort them into types. Now we do have a video all about different types of needles and what's what. It's quite an old video now. We did it a while ago, but it's all really relevant still. Needles don't change at all. So we will make a playlist of needles up and I'll put that up at the end of this video and anything relevant to needles will be in there. So do go and check that out for the different types because I'm going to mention them briefly here, but that one's quite in depth. So we're going to look at the types of needles that we have got. So obviously some are small and some are big chunky ones, but they might be the same kind of needle. So what you're looking for is initially is the end of the needle. So anything that's blunt at the end. So this one is blunt. You could hurt yourself if you stabbed yourself with it, but it's not got a really sharp point on it. It's just got a rounded off end and that is a tapestry needle. So that's good for cross stitch. It's good for needle points, it's good for black work. Anything that's got holes in it that you want to count your holes with, you would use a tapestry needle. So take anything out that's got this blunt point on it. It's a blunt end. Um, just while I'm picking that one up, it's got an interesting bend in it. 
that one. I can't really think of a use for that. So this is a good time to get rid of any needles that are bent or they've gone a fairly rusty colour or something like that. So get rid of anything that's not, not going to work anymore. So there's another tapestry. So I'm just going to pull all of the ones with the blunt end out first. Okay, so I've got all of my tapestry needles out and we'll sort those into size in a bit, but I just want to look at the next kind of needle. So we have ones that have got a very long, thin eye in them. You can see that there, hopefully. It's a really long eye in them. Now these ones have got a sharp point on the end and these ones are a chenille needle. So these ones are really good for ribbon embroidery. The long, thin eye will take the thick um, ribbon, when I say thick, the wide ribbon, um, and, but they've got the sharp point on so you can get through the fabrics. I'm going to take those ones out next. So there's one, you can see that super large long eye in it. So that's a chenille, that one is a chenille. So is that one and that one. If I just compare that with that, you'll see the difference. You'll see what I'm talking about. Hopefully with the eye, you can see that there. That eye is like twice as long as that one in there. So this should be really obvious. You may not have these needles in your needle case, which is fine, but I'm trying to cover all kinds of needles. There's another one there. Um, if you're not sure, you can just leave them to the end. There's another one. There's one as well. Different sizes of them, but they're the same type of needle. And you can tell either by what's happening at the end or the eye. So we've got quite a few of those ones. That one isn't one. That's a long one and that's a long one. Okay, so oh, there's one more there. So I've got my tapestries and I've got my chenilles. And then we've got left some cruel needles and some embroidery needles. So these are actually the same needle. They have a different name depending on what size they are. So it goes embroidery 12, 10 and 9 and then it goes crawl 7 and 5 and then you might get a 3 as well. But they are actually the same needle. So they have a point on the end of them and they've got a long eye. So not as long as the chenilles but a longer than an ordinary sewing needle that would be a sharp. So it's just got a tiny little round hole in the end for a, um, a sewing cotton. These are going to take embroidery thread or a wool. So the eye is a little bit longer to allow that thread to go in. So this is what we've got left here. So all of these should be cruel needles slash embroidery needles. So I'm just going to lay them out and see if they are. Some of them are tiny. That's a tapestry. That's got a long thin eye out. So I'll take that one out there. Right, so we've got crawls, those are there. We've got chenilles there. We've got tapestries there. Now you might find you have some other needles. There are many, many, many different types of needles. You might have some quilting needles for a quilter. They're very small needles and um, some milliner's needles, some sharps needles that we've mentioned. Um, so they will look a little bit different. So if you've got anything that doesn't look like any of those, you can have a kind of page with, with the leftover ones in it as well. And you might have some curved needles. These are really useful. We've got a video about these as well if you want to know about how to use these. So I'm going to keep those separate as well. So let's sort those into sizes. So when you're sorting by size, you're literally sorting by size, which one's got the biggest eye, which is the longest one. So I'm just going to spread them out and literally put them in order from shortest, smallest to longest, largest. Now you will find that the same needle that the needles do get shorter. So a number 12 embroidery is not the same length as a number 9 embroidery. But you've sorted them into types, so just sort them by size now. So you can just take the largest ones, doesn't matter if you go left to right or right to left, just put the larger ones together. You might find they're a bit magnetic and they stick to each other. And as best you can, sort them into what you think is the largest to smallest. That one is a little rogue one. That's not a chenille. It's jumped in there. 
We've got lots of the same size as well. And the other thing that's worth mentioning is that different manufacturers might be different lengths. So just because one is shorter than another one, don't think it's a different needle. It might be the same needle, but it's just made by somebody else instead. So if you're not sure, just check the ends. Is it sharp? And has it got a really long, thin eye, a medium length eye or a little tiny round eye? And that should help you sort them out. So I sorted all of these out into size. Hopefully you can see the difference in them. So here are the chenilles in the middle here. And you can see that these ones are larger than these. They're longer when I put them next to each other. And there's actually two sizes here. I've got five of those and four of those ones. Um, these are the tapestries. So the same here. We've got two sizes here. They're sticking together a little bit because they've magnetised themselves a little bit. Try and... Oh, that was that. Trying to do it so... <laughs> that you can see it, they're all going all over the place. So let me just get one, there we go. So you can see the two sizes again are different there. This one's a little bit longer than this one. And these are my embroidery needles and we've got one, two, three, four sizes in here. Now I happen to know what sizes these are. I know that's a five, sorry, yes, that's five, that's a seven. Those are cruel needles. Then they go into embroidery needles, same needle, different name. That's a nine um, and that's a ten. Five, seven, nine, ten, and twelve. <laughs> Got four sizes there, and you can see how they get smaller as they go, um, as they change needle size. And just quickly to mention, the larger the number, the smaller the needle. Doesn't mean if it's a twelve, it's larger than a nine. It's the other way around. The higher the number, the smaller the needle. So I know some of you want to know, how do I know what needle size it is? Now, the needle size, the number it's given, isn't really very important. It's knowing how to choose the right size and how to listen to the sound that it's making and what does it feel and does the thread fall out. And I talk about this quite a lot in a couple of videos. So do check out my stranded cotton video all about the stranded cotton. We talk about it in there and how you can tell what's the right size needle to use. Also in the linen thread video, but I do think this is probably worthy of a video of its own so I will have a look at making one of those it'll be up on the playlist at the end when that one is done um, so don't worry too much about the size if you get them in the right order after a period of time if you use them a lot you will learn what sizes they are if you've got one still in the packet you can compare and then you can label them all up so let's get them back in the needle case Okay, so let's get them back in the needle case. Now, the great thing about the books with the different pages in, you can have a different page or a different type of needle. So let's put uh, embroidery ones in first. So I'm going to put the cruel needles. So these are the larger ones, the larger embroidery ones in here like so. And again, put them in the order that they are. So you could put the larger ones, it doesn't matter which size, on that side. Then I can put the medium ones there. So those are specifically the cruel ones. And then what you could do is you could make yourself a label for them. I've just done some stickers for now, but you could sew one in. You could put it on paper and you could sew it in, whatever you like. Just put some stickers. So I know that those are cruel needles. Whether I actually put them back there or not is another matter <laughs> altogether. And that depends on how organised you are. But if you start with good intentions, then you've got a fighting chance. So then the embroidery ones can go in next. Again, larger ones to the left, no particular reason. And if you sort of leave a little gap in them, you know that there's a change of size. You haven't got to keep working it out every time. So that's nines, tens. I've only got one little 12. I don't use a 12 very often. Teeny tiny. And I can stick my embroidery sticker in there. So I should do the same with the others. Hello, I don't really want to play with the pins, buddy. It's not going to end well, is it? Other than an expensive vet bill. <laughs> you can play with that because I don't need that anymore. <laughs> Made myself a new one. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> pulled the whole tablecloth off. Right, you play with that. Well, <laughs> I finished talking to our lovely stitchers. Okay, so I'm going to ignore him and carry on. 
better that he's playing that than with the needles and pins. So those are the old broken ones. If you've got old broken needles and pins, just get a jar, stick them all in the jar, put a big label on it, Sharps jar, keep it out of the way of anybody who's going to get hurt by them. And you can take those to a pharmacy or something that'll get rid of sharp objects for you when it's full. Take you a while to fill it up. And there's a bent pin as well. So we'll put that in there. So I put them in my needle book. I've labelled, oh, put one more label there. I only want to get to it. So I've got my cruel needles in size. Now if I just straighten them, you can see the difference in sizes there. The embroidery needles ones, large to small. Chenille the same. You can see the length of them is different. You can clearly see which one is larger and which one isn't. And I know which needles that I use a lot as well. So I know the largest size chenille I have. It's a 22, so that's going to be 22 and that's going to be 24. So if you do know, you could write another label underneath for that. These are my tapestry needles. Stick that in there, like so. Again, large to small for those. Put my curved needles on a separate page and I'll get my pins on the last page because I do find those useful. So that's how you can organise your needles. Again, don't worry too much about the size of them. It's about choosing the right size needle rather than what number it has got on it. So I hope you have found that useful and you're inspired to rush off and sort your needles out. One more thing I'm just going to mention before I go. I just want to mention how to take care of your needles. Now if you use them a lot you should throw them away really and replace them but you can keep them going a little bit lo longer if you want to. This is a needle cleaner. It's got some hard abrasive powder material inside it and you can just push your needle in and out of there and you can feel that. That will just clean any residue off the needle if you've got oily hands or anything like that. That will just clean it off and make it last a little bit longer. But if they start to bend and anything like that, then do get rid of them and replace them with another one. So do make sure that you check out our playlist here of all of the different videos that we've got about needles. They're really useful to know those and to learn all about your embroidery needles. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Do give it a thumbs up if you liked it as usual. And I think I need to go and feed the ginger cat before he eats what's left of my sewing kit. So we'll see you next time.